This is our pre-calculus mid-fourth nine weeks test preview. So I'm going to go over these problems. I have a limited amount of time here. Um, so these are example problems for what you're going to face next week for your test. What is the angle 90 degrees converted into radian measure? If you remember the your unit circle, you can look at that. That's going to be an easy problem. Another way to do this is you can convert if you have uh, if you know that 180 degrees is equivalent to pi radians. You can convert this 90 degrees to radians by multiplying by pi over 180 degrees. And degrees over degrees cancel. So 90 over 180 simplifies to 1 half. So we have 1 half pi, which the terminology most often used is pi over 2 radians. So if we just, uh, if you can remember for unit circle, C unit circle, uh, use our conversion, easy problem. Next, which following is the conversion of an angle that measures 21 degrees 15 minutes into degrees? The thing we need to understand here is that uh, 60, 60 minutes is equivalent to 1 degree. So if we take this 21, take this 21 degrees, 15 minutes, it's equal to 20 degrees plus 15 over 60 degrees. And 20, I said 20. I can't even remember what I'm doing here. Okay, 21 degrees. So 15 over 60 simplifies to uh, 1 fourth. So our answer is going to be 21.25 degrees, which is answer choice C. Next, what is the cosecant of an angle that measures 7 pi 6 radians? If you remember from your from a unit circle, which I'm going to draw right here, where is 7 pi over 6 located? Right over here. And that's going to be uh, one thing you can do is is you can convert this into degrees uh, if, if you want to if you have 210 degrees or even in radians if I go to my calculator let's see I'm going to see what I'm in right now radians well I'm going to quit here still in still in radians so I'll go to second quit so I'll go to sine of 7 pi over 6. So 7 pi divided by 6. You might find it easier just to convert to degrees. So we have this. We get negative 0.5, and we want cosecant. So if we put a reciprocal, or 1, divided by we're going to get negative 2. So negative 2 is our answer to this one. So just understanding the unit circle, degrees, radians, if we're in degrees we would use 210 degrees and we have to understand here that cosecant theta equals a reciprocal of sine theta. So that's the identity used here. Okay, next. For the angle 
x equals 15 degrees, which, trigonom which trigonometric ratio has the least value? And if we just kind of look here, this is in uh, quadrant one, an acute angle. If we go up here and have 15 degrees. Okay. <clears throat> so right here, <coughs> our, uh, our cotangent, so we're going to have a certain value here. We're going to have an opposite, and I don't know what it is yet. We're going to have an adjacent. Well, if this is anywhere near proportionally correct, uh, cotangent is going to be less than tangent because opposite over adjacent is going to be less than adjacent over opposite, so C is not correct. Uh, cosecant is never going to be, cosecant is reciprocal of sine, and cosecant is never going to be less than 1. So that cannot be correct. So it's going to be between sine x and tangent x. Uh, thing here, I can convert this 15 degrees into radians, but the more simple thing to do in my calculator, so it's between sine x and tangent x. So we go here, and I'm going to convert this mode in the, in the mode mode. So it's between sine, 15 degrees, and tangent, 15 degrees. Those are the candidates. So our least value is sine. So sine, so sine, uh, sine, 15 degrees is less than tangent, 15 degrees. Okay, just to calculate. Now, for triangle shown, what is the sine of angle X? Well, sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So, in this case, the sine sine X is going to be equal to uh, our hypotenuse is 13, so over 13. So I'm looking for an answer over 13, which I do not find in answers C or B. Um, what's going to happen is that 10 is our adjacent side, so our cosine is going, cosine being adjacent over hypotenuse, it's going to be 10 over 3, 10 over 13. That's going to be cosine. So just by process elimination so far, we're going to have A. And what we're going to have for our opposite side is C squared minus A squared. So we have, we have C squared minus A squared equals C squared. And so you're going to get you're going to get uh, 69 equals b squared. So b is going to be equal to plus or minus square root of 69. And in the context of this problem, we're going to just have the positive value because distance is recognized geometrically in, in this context only as positive, possibly. What is the measure of the acute angle in degrees whose cosine value equals the square root of 3 over 2? What we can do is, if we say cosine, set an equation, cosine theta equals square root of 3 over 2. If we take the inverse of this, whole equation, cosine negative 1, we're going to get theta equals inverse cosine of square root of 3 over 2. And if, you're under, if you know the unit circle cold on this deal, it'll be easy for you. 
I've demonstrated the hand trick in this class. And then you have to say, well, we're talking about acute angle, and we know that inverse cosine is going to be unique for for co for theta between zero and 180 degrees. So this definitely qualifies. So we go to calculator. We say we see we're in degrees. So I put uh, second cosine, which is inverse cosine, and I'm going to put square root of 3, and we're going to divide that by 2, and we get 30 degrees. Now, I hope most of you would know that without having to go to the calculator for it, being a one well, of the 16 points in the unit circle, but that'll be fine. About how many degrees are there in two radians? Well, again, to find out degrees and radians, it really, it really revolves upon this identity here. The 180 degrees is equivalent to pi radians. So if we want one radian, so it, it, to solve this equation, if we divide by pi, one radian is equal to 180 over pi. So if we want two radians, that's going to be 2 times 180 over pi. So uh, and that's going to be equal to intercalculator. So 2 times 180, which is 360, over pi, we get 114.59 degrees. Which is going to be closest to answer choice B. And one fact I've tried to emphasize a little bit in this class anyway is that one radian is approximately equal to 57.3 degrees. So that should be quite an easy problem. You have similar, one similar to that. Circle has a diameter of, of 16 meters. And this is an important one because I, I looked at the test and there are three problems that, are, that have something to do with arc length formula, I believe. So arc length formula is going to be S equals r theta and this has to this applies in this form if theta in uh, the units of radians so if you should happen to have degrees we're going to have to do a conversion of the of the of the degrees into radians to make this work well here we have a diameter but we need a radius so uh, radius equals uh, diameter divided by 2 and so uh, 16 divided by 2 equals 8. So that's our radius. So using the S equals R theta, we have 8. And we have 2 pi radians. So 8 times 2 pi, which is going to be 16 pi. And that'll be, uh, our, it'll be meters. So we, go, we, have, we don't have any in terms of pi answers. So let's go to our calculator. It should be readily apparent what it is. It should be B, I believe. So 16 pi. Yeah, so about 50.3, 50, 50 the nearest tenth meter. That's choice B. Again, this is a key formula. Write that down. S equals R theta. Know what? It. It'll help you a lot. It can make you or break you on this test. If there is an okay, next one. If there's an angle in quadrant four of the graph of the unit circle, what must you do to find its reference angle? And if you look at a, I'm just going to draw an example here. If you look at a unit circle down here in the fourth quadrant, you'll have 
um, that's 270 degrees. You'll have 300 degrees. You'll have 300 and what is it, 15 degrees. And then you'll have 330 degrees. And, and I put this in, these in degrees only because that's what this is most the answer talking about. And what you have to do for this, it's your reference angle is the smallest positive angle to get to the x-axis. So if we have this 300 degree angle right here, okay, it's 300 degrees, our reference angle, so that's going to be our theta and standard position, our reference angle is going to be the angle from the x-axis to 300 degrees. So to get this, we have to take 360 degrees minus 300 degrees, which equals, in this case, 60 degrees. So we have to subtract 300 from 60 degrees. C is our correct answer. And all these other answer choices represent how to find reference angles in the other three quadrants. This one here would be a, answer A would be first quadrant. Uh, subtract it from 180 degrees. This would be for second quadrant. If we had 150 degrees, 180 degrees, my sorry. And then uh, answer choice D would be for the third quadrant. Next, what is the secant of angle theta? Well, the secant theta is equal to 1 over cosine theta. That's your identity chart. So to get our, our what is our cosine theta? It's going to be uh, something over hypotenuse, which is 11. So what's going to be? It's going to be square root of 11 squared minus 8 squared, which is going to be square root of 57. So cosine theta is equal to square root of 57 over 11. So being the reciprocal, secant theta is going to be equal to 11 over square root of 57. I know this is not rationalized, but uh, Our correct answer is C. Next, just following pairs of angle measures is coterminal with each other. Basically, what you're looking for are two angles which are 360 degrees apart, because 360 degrees constitutes a full circle rotation. So, uh, A, for these two angles, they're 400 apart is negative 200 plus 400. So A is not correct. Here, for answer choice B, if we take negative 210 degrees plus 360 for full rotation, we get 150 degrees. So B is going to be our correct choice. And you can see that this next one here, they're going to be uh, 3... 30 apart and pi radians and 2 pi radians that's going to be pi or equivalent to 180 degrees apart B is our correct answer next solve for the unknown to the nearest tenth here we can do this a uh, number of different ways we have a 60 30 90 right triangle so we can say uh, if we use our 30 degrees down here, we can say that x is our opposite, and it would make 51 down here our adjacent. Well, if we know that tangent x or tangent 30 degrees equals x or 51, we know that 
x equals 51 tangent 30 degrees. So we go to our calculator and we say 51 tangent 30 degrees 29.44 Close to answer choice D and also we can use special right triangles if we have uh, X, uh, this side down here is going to be 51 equals X square root of 3. So if we divide 51 by square root of 3, we'd also get the same answer. Next, uh, what is the measure of reference angle for, for an angle whose measurement is standard position is 173 degrees? So what we do for here is we can go back to what I talked about in this instance here, right? In quadrant uh, 2, it says subtract it from 180 degrees. So we go back here and say, okay, so subtract it from 180 degrees equals 7 degrees. And also, uh, you're going to have you're going to have the shortest positive angle to the x-axis. The only answer that could possibly qualify is B because none of these other answers are, are remotely correct, could be correct. Now, the angle of depression of a buoy in the middle of San Francisco Bay from the top of a lighthouse, 130 feet above water, is level of 6 degrees. So I have a little lighthouse drawn here. So we take this being 130, 130 feet. So that we have that, that's the height of the lighthouse. And we have a buoy out in the distance. Buoy is a floating prominence in the water that, that can mark underwater hazards, perhaps, or where you should be. And so, angle depression to a buoy. So, if we look from the top here of the lighthouse, angle depression is down from here. So, we look down from the top of the lighthouse. It's going to look something like this. Right to the buoy here. So, our angle depression right here is going to be 6 degrees. And we want to know this distance right here. So here's our distance, our horizontal distance. And um, you can do this uh, different ways. One way that a lot of people like to do in my classes is to take is to use the complement of 6 degrees. So what number plus 6 adds up to 90 degrees? That's going to be 84 degrees. So you can write this, if you use 84 degrees, you can say the, if for 84 degree angle, our D is our opposite. So, so the tangent of 84 degrees equals our distance opposite over 130 feet. So, so D is going to be equal to 130 tangent uh, 84 degrees. So D, let me go ahead and figure this out. 130 tangent, make sure that we are in degrees. And there are, we have, uh, no, 130 tangent, 84 degrees. Where did that? 30 come from? I guess up here. I guess I just look at. So 1,237 feet around the earth's foot. So that's going to be D right here. You know, a problem like this. And you're going to have a, quite a few problems where you're just going to have to know like tangent, the heights of 
buildings and so forth. Let me go ahead to our last problem in this exercise set. <clears throat> this video lesson from the top of a 100 foot building, a man observes a car moving toward the building. Here we have a car in two places. So if we just draw a horizontal road there. So if we have an angle of depression here, of, and this is the closest one here, so this is going to be 46 degrees. And then you also have another angle of depression here, which is going to be 22 degrees. So you're going to try to find the, you're going to try to find, you have this triangle to work out this distance here, which we can call y, minus this distance here, which is x. Uh, one way you could do this, again, you can change it to a tangent instead. So if, if this is a 46 degree angle of depression here, this is going to translate to a 44 degree angle down here, because uh, for cotangent, it's a complement. And for this angle over here, we're going to have 90 minus 22, or let's see what that's 68 degrees. So what we're going to have is, and when we know this is a 100 foot tall building, so what we're going to have is 100 tangent of 68 degrees minus 100 tangent of 44 degrees. And we can just put this in our calculator. And essentially it's just finding two triangles for different triangles. So you have one problem very much like this on your test. So uh, 100 tangent 68 degrees minus 100 tangent 44 degrees. So for this we get 150.9 feet. Okay, so that will be our answer here. So this will cover the essence of what will be tested here next week. Again, remember that arc length formula, S equals R theta. That's an important formula. All the other formulas you should have on your uh, regular ACP formula chart. I know this will be helpful to you if you follow it and understand everything herein. You should do really well on this test next week. Good luck, and thanks for viewing.